Bruce Wolf, Dan Profton. We're joined in the studio right now by Ravi Beishwal, ABC7 anchor and reporter. And uh, Ravi, we, thanks for coming in. And you are one of the people that actually has been right there at the, at the blue line. Uh, where that accident occurred. What was it like just to see that? That is something right out of uh, a horror show, a cartoon show, you name it. It just seems unreal. I was there Wednesday night, so a good 36, 48 hours after it happened, and uh, a firefighter was kind enough to sort of take me a little bit behind enemy lines there and take a look at how they were actually dismantling the first car and the second car. But to see something so big to be completely out of where it needs to be right. was just like if you've ever walked into a kid's room that looks like it's a big mess this is like that on steroids it, it, insane. it must have been like if you would have had a car drive through a window while you were doing the news oh wait a second no, no. that happened to you Hi, yo. that's easy that's easy <laughs> no hey whoa hey no parking yeah cars belong in those rooms because you do the auto show every year that's no problem there but yeah to climb the escalator mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and then you know the guy uh, you you had the interview uh Jen seven with the, the police officer who says you know he he could have easily walked down that escalator uh, at that time at point and now we're just realizing that one of the crimes that was committed there was the the train went up a down escalator I mean that so, is yeah. very the, that is yeah. extraordinary and it would have to be that I should say that my colleague Paul Meinke was able to find that uh, police officer who through fate simply chose to have a conversation with the passerby instead of going down that escalator the one that was actually pointed down and he would have been, frankly, he would have just been crushed. It's amazing more people didn't get hurt, and we can be thankful for that. And uh, uh, what do you make of the CTA still? I mean, I understand they have to go through the adjudicative process formally, but uh, uh, the statement that um, the operator, second uh, falling asleep at the switch in two months, that uh, she may be dismissed because of this. She may be. Well, you know, I've had the good occasion to go to the... Uh, to the union after any number of issues and to try to go and get straight answers and uh, they can be elusive at times I'll say that <laughs> Robert Kelly seems to be cut right out of central casting in terms of what you may think of as an urban transit union leader be careful Ruffy you are losing oh uh, uh, yes okay. yes just be careful here. I'm, I'm just advising. these are all these are only these are only <laughs> facts and observations based on sure. my walking around in this, uh, as in a, this as town. As a private citizen. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. well, certainly as a private citizen who gets to go and see these things up close and personal. And uh, let's be clear also that the operator said that in the previous incident, she clarified that she did not fall asleep. She actually had just closed her eyes for a moment. I see. Well, that is an important distinction. No, it's a five-second um, rule. But, <laughs> but, but it was uh, that the eye closure was long enough that she missed the platform, which is kind of the function of her position. Right. She yeah. missed the platform by one car, which necessitated skipping, skipping that station and moving to the next, and she was written up for that. They uh -huh. should have longer platforms. Uh, it's not her fault. Yeah, yeah. Really. It, it is interesting, though, to see the union reaction here. From an, an analysis point of view, it will be interesting to see how they use this situation in the next bargaining around their arguments about work time and uh, sure. how hard their folks are working and the it's questions of fatigue. Yeah. I think strategically that may be something to watch for. Right. You're going to have to have more than 18 hours between shifts. Yeah. All right, yeah. Uh, Ruby, if you work nine to five, do the math. <laughs> Ruby, they need you downstairs. Uh, apparently, they need you to help put a new window in on the uh, ABC Seven uh, showcase. And stanchions, yeah. and stanchions out front. That was seven years ago. Really? Seven. You still have nightmares over there? I I never had one nightmare. Really? It How was, about tonight? It was, it was cool. Okay. It was no problem. It can't happen again. Although I do say sometimes on Saturday nights, people do like to pull U-turns on State Street. And, <laughs> and it, you get a little kind of, kind of go like that. <laughs> By the way, ho hopefully the camera's on Karen at that moment. Ruffy will be uh, appearing not only at the Channel 7 studio, but at his own show in the Chicago Theater across the street. Uh, he and I are going to yeah, do a dance yeah. review there, yes. off of our Dancing with Chicago Celebrities. I'm, so I'm so glad to have done that with you, Dan. You it were was great. fun. It was Thanks fun. so much for joining us, Ruffy. Come back. Pleasure.